Okay, in this video, we're going to look at how to create a bar graph from raw data in Minitab. So I have imported my data into Minitab. I've opened a Excel file that has data on business school students uh, from two different years, their nationality and their gender. And so what we're going to do is we're going to create use one of these data sets to create a bar graph. Now, there's two different ways that we can go about doing this. The first is under the graphing tab, we're going to scroll down and select the bar chart. Now, I suggest this option is probably the best option if you're using a simple graph or if you know exactly what you want to put into the bar chart. So I'm going to use the simple graph type, uh, counts of unique values. I'm going to select OK. And I'm going to use the third column here as my uh, thing that I'm going to plot. So I'm going to plot the, a bar graph of the nationalities. Now, I um, previously had created an example of this. You can type in your column name, or you can double click on it. Either of those options for selecting the variable that you want to use is fine. For the chart options, now, uh, the default chart option is just to put them in either whatever order they appear in the list um, of data, or uh, sometimes they will appear alphabetically. Um, that means that the bars will not be any organized size. Uh, if you want to have it sorted by size, by height of the bar, essentially to create a Pareto chart, um, then you can select either increasing Y or decreasing Y. So in increasing Y, it will start with the smallest bar and it will work its way up to the tallest bar. In decreasing Y, it will start with the tallest bar and then it'll work its way down to the shortest bar. Um, you can also have options here to select uh, showing as a percent of the total data or you can accumulate Y across X. So this would be a cumulative frequency chart. Uh, I'm not gonna choose either of those for right now. I'm gonna choose the decreasing Y and then I'm gonna hit okay. And then the other thing that you wanna absolutely make sure that you always do for all of these options is to choose a label. And you want to make sure that you have at least a title now, your footnotes you can use for like data sources and things like that. Um, if you want to add additional clarity, you can add subtitles. But at a minimum, you should have a title that is descriptive of what you are graphing. Uh, remember that the people who are viewing your graph are not going to have access to the original data. And so you need to provide them enough content, context in order to interpret your graph. Um, and then... You also have an option to add data labels. So at the height of your bars, you can leave them blank. That's the default label none. You can have them labeled with the count so that it's easier for, to read the graph. Um, or you can use data labels from another column. Now, uh, what I would suggest is that if your graph is very, very busy, the, the using the Y labels can make it busier. Um, so this is not always the best choice, but it's the one I'm going to use here. And then hit OK. Um, there are some other options that you can use. Um, you can adjust things like the axis and tick marks, grid lines and reference lines. I'm not going to worry about any of those. Um, the data view, again, you have some options for bars, connecting lines, or other kinds of graphs. I encourage you to experiment with these to see what they look like, but bars is a, is the default. That's what we're here for. Um, if you are um, creating multiple graphs, um, you might want to use this one. Although if you're plotting multiple variables, um, I would suggest actually using the other graphing option that we're going to talk about a little bit later. Uh, again, unless you are experienced and you exactly you know exactly what you're looking for. And then for the data options, again, you can, uh, if you have some data that you want to leave out because it's um, there's it's a problem or something, you can specify which ones to include or which ones to exclude. Um, we've specified all of them uh, using all the rows. Again, but this is options for 
subsetting your data in case there's some that you don't want to you don't want to include you want to leave out um if you have any that are blank then you have options for telling you what to do with those and if you are uh if you have a pre-summarized data list um, that just has the labels and then the counts are already summarized in another column, then you can specify a column of numerical data where they can draw the heights of the bars from instead of counting them from your column names. So we're, we're using raw data here, so that doesn't apply to us. And then when you've selected all of the categories that you want to select, then hit OK. And so here is our graph. Um, it the, the axes are pre-labeled for us, which is great. Every good graph should have axis labels. We have the count on the vertical axis. The nationality is the name of our column name on the, the horizontal axis. And we have our nations that we have students from uh, spelled out on the horizontal axis. Only the, only the ones that actually have representation in the data set you can see that some of these are only one a piece. Uh, most of the students in this year come from the United States. And of course, we have a good title. And if you want to copy it out of here, then you have options to send it to various um, places like Word or copy the graph or th things like that. You can also go in after the fact and edit the graph, which we're not going to do right now because we like this graph. All right, so that's one option for creating, again, a simple bar graph. Now, what if we wanted to create a slightly more complicated graph? What if we wanted to, for instance, to plot gender and nationality? Now, you can certainly do it through um, the graphing option with the bar chart. But if you actually use the graph builder option uh, that's available in this cur current version of Minitab, you can actually see the graphs before you produce them. And so when you're doing something a little bit more complicated, I prefer to use this option because sometimes, you know, you, do I want it stacked or do I want it clustered? Um, do I want it organized by this variable or that variable? So you can see all of the options before you commit to them. In the uh, option that we used earlier, we basically were going blind. So if we knew what we were looking for, then it's all good. But if we're trying to decide, do I want this or do I want that? I have to create them and then decide from all these different versions that I've created. And the graph builder option lets me skip that. So uh, when you first enter this, uh, what you're gonna do is you're gonna select the bar chart option from the graph gallery. Uh, we're dealing with categorical data here. So a lot of these things like histograms and box plots and line plots, they're not appropriate for our data. Uh, in another video, we can come back and we can look at the pie chart, which is another categorical plot. But right now we're looking at the bar graph. And then in the graph builder there, just like with the, the bar chart option, they're going to tell us what the column names are that we can choose from. And again, categorical variables. Um, so what I wanna do in this case is I wanna select um, two data sets, two variables, both gender and nationality in order to uh, compare them. So uh, I'm gonna select both gender and nationality. And I guess you have to drag them to make them apply. Um, you have some options down here on the bottom in terms of clustered or um, stacked. So let's look at both of those. And again, this is for raw data. This is not a summarized variable option. So one option is to have separate graphs for each variable, each categorical variable. So this is um, male and female, and this is nationality. So you're basically creating two separate graphs, one for each of the two data sets. Um, or you can combine them into a single um, graph that plots both of them next to each other. In um, this case, you also have the option of 
having them grouped by by nationality or by gender primarily. So in this example, it's grouped by gender. And so what you see is you have from Barbados, for instance, we have one person that's female and one person that's male from Barbados. Um, from Brazil, we have one female, but two males and so forth. And again, these are not sorted at the moment. They're just however they appear, I believe alphabetically. Um, but the bars for the gender and the uh, are next to each other. The two genders are next to each other, grouped by country. Um, but if you want to do it the other way around, so you can also group them by all the women together and all the men together uh, in separate clusters so that each one of these are the nationalities all with the females and these are the nationalities all with the males. And then you have a a legend at the bottom that tells you what the colors stand for all the different nationalities. Now, if my goal is sort of look at the overall distribution, then the grouping in this case by primarily on gender and clustering on nationality, then um, that makes sense to do it this way. But if I want to compare like which countries maybe am I getting more women from then like, for instance, what's interesting here is that uh, Taiwan is the only country it looks like where we are actually getting more women than men. Um, you can't really tell that from the other way the, the data was very was organized. So uh, I prefer looking at it in this way, because that way I can actually see that information. Um, I can do that side by side comparison within each country. Now, some other graph options, I can order the bars. So I right now the default is unordered, but I can order them as we had in the previous um, example, order them by increasing or by decreasing sizes. Um, we can also change the orientation of our graph if we prefer to have it um, represented horizont as horizontal bars instead of vertical bars. That's also fine. And then another option that we have from in here, and again, you can do this with the other um, chart option uh, tool that we looked at. Um, but again, we're trying to visualize it before we commit to it, is we can do these stacked bars. And the stacked bars, um, it's a little harder to compare um, like within the genders, you know, males versus females, but it is easier to see um, the relative sizes of the different countries. So if you want to focus on uh, the, the number of people from each country and then sort of secondarily think about the proportionality, then the stacked bars work a little better for that. If you want to see, like, again, the relative counts, males versus females, um, this takes up a little bit more space because they're, it's spread out. It's not stacked on top of each other. But it is easier to sort of focus on one individual country and not, and you know, again, gender by gender comparison uh, rather than the totals. So, again, it just depends on, there's no, like, one right answer, but it depends on what you want to focus on as you're producing your graph. So I'm gonna choose this one, uh, the horizontal, a little bit of a change up from our previous graph, um, clustered by gender um, uh, with the nationalities being our main axis labels. And then um, in addition to that, of course, um, you can also make various other adjustments such as adding uh, titles to the graphs and things like that. So I'm gonna go ahead and create this. And this is now our graph. And again, as with uh, the previous graph, if you click on it, uh, you can uh, send it to your Word or your PowerPoint or copy it or do other kinds of things. And you can make adjustments to it, like adding a title, graph of business school students by gender and 
and nationality. So again, you can produce this exact same graph from the other option, but you don't get the option of seeing it and playing around with it and making decisions about it in the same way um, in that bar graph, bar chart option. If you know exactly what you want, and particularly if you're doing something simple, then that is a straightforward way of going about it. You don't have to deal with all of the other options. The defaults are mostly okay as long as you add a graph title. But um, if you were doing something more complicated and you're not sure what you want to do, this graph builder option is really nice. 